Greetings to those of you joining us today. Uh, welcome. Um, I'm Pastor Dave Foss, and, and you're at Bethel Church. Uh, whether you're joining us online or at Bethel Battle Lake, we're glad that you're with us today. Um, today, what we're doing is we're stepping away from the series that we've been in in the book of Ephesians so that I can share with you an exciting vision here at Bethel called Make Room. Um, some of you are new to Bethel, which is exciting to us. We're so glad that you're here. And because of that, uh, you might have only a vague idea of what Make Room is all about. Uh, others of you have been around for a while, and so uh, Make Room is something you've, you've heard. We've shared this vision with you. But uh, it's time for those vision buckets to be refilled, right? Uh, every leader knows from every organization that occasionally uh, our vision buckets leak. And they need to be refilled. And so I would like to do that for us today. So go back with me a couple of years. Two years ago, we as a church put before the congregation um, a vision for mission and facility expansion because we saw both a need for it and an opportunity. An opportunity for us to step out in faith as a congregation and to, to make room, to quite literally make room. And so we've asked people to both engage in and to invest in the mission of Christ in our generation. Why? Why do we do that? Because here's the reason. Because every generation needs to own its chance to proclaim the message of Jesus Christ, to proclaim the gospel. Every generation needs to say, this is on us to do that. It, it's up to us to continue to bring the good news to the people where we live and around the world. It's on us in our generation. To every generation gets to say, there are people all around us who need to hear, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So question, church, who's going to engage in and invest in that message being told to our community and in our generation, in our world today? Answer, we are. We are. That is on us. We own that. There are people all around us who need to hear, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. So who's going to invest in and engage in that message getting out to the people of the community and the world and the generation in which we live? We are. We are, Bethel. People need to hear that God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Who's going to engage in and invest in that message being told in our generation? We are. We are. The world needs to hear that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Who's going to engage in and invest in the message that I just read for us from Scripture that, to get to the world, to the generation in which we live? We are. We as a church own that now. We live in a world where people, people need to hear, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justifies, justified, and it is with your mouth that you, you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So church, if that's what God's word says, who is going to invest in and engage in that message getting out to the people who live in our generation? We are. That's on us. This is our opportunity. And this is what we as a church have been doing in every generation that we've existed as a congregation. We're not going to stop now. Over the last 100 years, Bethel Church has, in each generation, followed the Lord's command, the Lord's call to make room. See, the reason that there's room for you here and now in this church to hear the good news of Jesus is because people in previous generations said, it matters. We need to own our mission so that the people in our generation and in the future get a chance to hear the gospel. 
They invested in it. They engaged in that mission of Christ in their generation. And so here we are. We get to hear the good news, and we get to share it with our generation now too. And they did that not because it was easy. They did it because it was important. It wasn't easy. It wasn't like somehow easier in the past. Like, oh, man, every generation is a bit woe is me. Oh, it's so hard now. The people in the past had it so easy, right? They didn't have it easy. It wasn't easy for them. You know what? A hundred years ago, guess what? A hundred years ago, in 1919, when Bethel was just seven years old, our church building was destroyed by an F5 tornado that ravaged through the city of Fergus Falls. So much destruction in this community. Our church was a, was a casualty of that tornado back in 1919, right? You think that was easy to go through as a congregation? No. And then a year later, just one year later in 1920, a global pandemic rocks the world, right? The death toll from the Spanish flu had reached 675,000 people in the United States and 50 million around the globe. Do you think after 1919 losing your building and, and, and 1920, a global pandemic, people were probably starting to think, yep, well, time to call it a day, I guess. I mean, let's just sort of <laughs> pack it in, you know, and go into protection mode. Let's just sort of keep what we got and just sort of ride the storm, right? Is that what they did? No, that's not what they did. Instead, what followed is 100 years of reaching out, of making room, of proclaiming the good news here in this community and around the world. Why? Why do we do that? Why did they and why do we today? Because Jesus said, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And church, that is exactly what we have seen God do among us here over the years. Every generation in Bethel's history has heard the call to make room in their lives for those that need Jesus. And as they made room in their lives for other people, guess what happened in the church? It began to grow. And, and, and we had people coming, and we got to figure out, we gotta figure out how we're going to not just make do for a while, but then make room because there's just not enough room. And, and if you just look at our church history, you see expansion and growth and movement, and it was because they were making room in their lives that they physically needed to make room in their facilities. They invested what was needed to minister to the people who were coming at that time and those that would one day come. And today, here's how I see it. We stand on their shoulders and we do the same thing in our generation. We've said as a church, let's own the mission of Christ in our generation. Will it be easy? I don't think so. I don't think it's easy, but I don't think we're called to do just what's easy. We're called to make room locally and regionally and internationally. And so, by God's grace, here's what we're trying to do. Three things. Meet the parking and facility challenges in Fergus Falls with vision for growth and impact. Number two, invest the resources required to develop a facility for growth and impact in Battle Lake. Number three, build a school capable of reaching the children of Budamasa, Chad, Africa. We made that commitment. We basically said, all right, God, you know, lead us forward. We're all yours. Let's see what you're going to do. And we stepped forward, seeing what God would do. And what have we seen? It's been incredible. In the middle of a pandemic, we've been making room. We acquired land to the west here in Fergus Falls and expanded our parking lot. Why? Because it was just way too small. It was always full. It was like, congratulations to you if you got a parking spot at Bethel in Fergus Falls. Wow, how'd you do it? You must have gotten here real early, right? It was crazy. Just crazy. We've renovated the sanctuary here, allowing for more adaptability, also for more space to move around and, and between rows. We added another worship service in Battle Lake. At first, in part, to, to deal with, you know, to spread out because of COVID-19 and the need to have this distance between ourselves, right? And now, because we no longer fit in one service in Bethel Battle Lake. Fantastic. Amazing. The community of Battle Lake recognized our commitment to that community and saw that we are the kind of church that's reaching out and not content to sort of exist in the community. And so because of that, we were gifted land in Battle Lake, right next to the place we're renting now. And a developer has stepped forward to put the church, to build a church there in Battle Lake. And, and recent setbacks notwithstanding, we are committed to making room 
for growth and impact in Battle Lake. We just are. And our online ministry has grown and been sharpened. It's amazing, right? It's amazing how a global pandemic can force you to learn some new stuff, right? We've had to figure out how to do online better and differently, learning new ways of doing ministry. Sometimes, you know, this is just what happens. This is how you learn. And it's been great, right? And just this week, you know, just this week, from, uh, we, got a, we got a, actually, we got a substantial gift uh, from someone who lives outside the area uh, and sent a, a note with the gift, and here's what the note read. We very much appreciate being part of your online community. Thank you for spreading the good news. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Right? Is it easy? No, it's hard, but God is using it. And what about in person? In person, we're gathering, and new people are coming all the time. In Fergus Falls and Battle Lake, there's just, we're running out of room, and it's just beautiful. I've seen us have to spill out into the foyer here in Fergus any number of times this fall. Saw it a few weeks ago in Battle Lake, the same thing at the, at the, at the 1030 service. It's amazing. It's fantastic. fantastic. Thanks be to God. This is what he's doing. We're making room. Uh, here, here's a picture. I got a picture I want to show you of the discovery class from last Sunday. Take a look. Here it is. Yep. About 30 people came. More wanted to come, but weren't able to. Some who are new to Fergus Falls, some who are new to Battle Lake. Some came because they're, the, they're excited about the ministry of Bethel and they want to become members, owning the mission and vision of our congregation as a church. Isn't that fantastic? And that is happening when research shows that membership in houses of faith is at an all-time low. Just this spring, in March, Gallup reported that membership in houses of worship has dropped below 50% for the first time in 80 years in our country. Why do I share this? I share this because, listen, growth, growth, mission and facility expansion, the need to make room for more people, that is not normal today. That is so not normal when many are just in protection mode and just trying to keep the thing going, some, for some reason, God is choosing to bless Bethel Church, and we need to respond because it's what you do when God does that. And then what about Chad Africa? What about Budamasa, right? You've heard us talk about in the recent months about what's going on there. We want to, by God's grace, reach across the globe and bless people that we will probably never meet, and we are doing that. By your prayers, by your giving, we have been able to partner with Lutheran Brethren International Missions and build an elementary school in the Bagirmi village of Budamasa. How cool is that? We built a school in Africa. I mean, two weeks ago, there was the dedication of this school uh, at a community celebration. Why are we doing that? Why are we, why are we blessing a, a people group in, in Budamasa, Chad, Africa, here's why. I, I want you to take a look at something. I want you to take a look at this man, a Bagirmi man, sharing about the Bagirmi people, who they are. I want you to listen to what he has to tell. Take a look at this. The Bagirmi are one of the unreached people groups that LBIM is working with in Chad. They are a tribe known for their hospitality. Indimara Tinen, Yal Indi Yal Asharo Tiza, Rigal Indi Indi Rigal Saba, Asharo Tine do Kulge Banat. One in a kitty manana come and Hirata, mind in a kitty meshe Aharma, in the Hirata Bakid Manana, Chocolal Duna, so lay up banana Kalulena, and the Kulasa Dabas Karabna, kind so would drop Poga Yalna, the Hirata was mind in a kitty maha. You can get anana, there a napar. Katir. Indina Halla Dugon, Indina Pal, Wo Indina Pool, Indina Libya, Zere Hanana da Gariblehil Guide, Hill Zer Garibla Hill Fi, Wo Zer Garibda, 
i dawra mu awana wasa tsera na da maciya min ba adama yabga ani na mashe na bait kalas kai na to khalla kai na to hul a shabakan hine da mudura na da matu da so u i dawra mu sadi shi a gabu ba girme da kullu ai ba girme kullu su dal zere amma lakin kullu fi gabile da nas waidin da alla ya ya rugum ni sauti jar kullu fi fi ba girme kullu nas gai sauti jar kullu fi fi ba girme kullu nas waidin kiti ma zer da michel pa to gudura na ya mshi fi kiti ma na bar ya mshi so hud ni so yi kurbu hud da bas kiti ma na bali rabbu ya la nam ille be kiti ma na ana hud kullu gai ali sauti jar Michel hana ana tabul shiya shiya daba zai kurbu be beta nan gulo gai amma akta bagir me da kidi ma nana da kirata bas ma inde na kidi ma aka haya fi duniya da shukul haya ke bidun da ma haya da awal awal al awal al haya da ma afi wonadum kan liga afi afi da ma ille 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 be maashi afi da mu yaji da ille be maashi kine le giddam da shukul da ruda أولا أولا أنا ندور عافي من الله لا مانا ندور عافي ما قال عافي ما قال هو عافي ده كان داتو عافي خلاص عافي بس خلاص هو ما إلي بكيدي ما نوشي أشياء غير عافي ده يجي إلي بكيدي ما نوشي أشياء كي قبل عافي ده يقول في كلام أنا إيسرا هو إيسرا أنا نقول هو نبي هو نبي أنا أنا بس هو إيسرا يعرف أنا أنا ده فقط أنا نقول ما يجي غيرنا إيسرا ده نعرفه بكان في في سورة المريم amma kalama masala na nantuke nantuke da fi grayal da ana da fata na ba isa da huna da anana adil ani ne kullu ni hubbu ma inda ai kalama amma lakin huda dawra mishil nadu mal algara mishil kitafa nauda as god opens doors for our missionaries to share jesus with them please pray that the girmi men and women would discover and receive the gospel so bethel should we make room in our lives financially and prayerfully so that the Bagirmi people of Chad Africa know Jesus? I think so. Yes. Yes, I absolutely think we should. I mean, isn't it interesting? Did you notice in what he shared how he talked about how the Bagirmi people are the kind of people that make room for other people? Isn't that fascinating? Listen, this is what he said. He said, quote, any person, no matter their ethnicity, we Bagirmi welcome them with open arms we embrace and then he put his hands to his heart he says we embrace anyone that comes to us that is the bigir me way and i sat there here now for the first time and thought if they're making room can we do any less i mean if they're making room can we do any less we are we are not adding on here in fergus falls just for us this is not for us it is for the people of our community, for Fergus Falls and surrounding community who need to know that there's a Jesus who died on the cross for them. That's who it's for. We're not going to build a church in Battle Lake just for us. This is not about us. We are building it for the people of Battle Lake and the surrounding community who need to know that Jesus died for them. That's who it's for. We built a school in Budamasa, Chad, not for us. It's for the children and the families of Budamasa who need to know that Jesus died for them. And you want to know what? They don't know that Jesus died for them. They're not taught that Jesus died for them. You heard in the video the Begirmi man say, well, regarding Jesus, well, he's one of our prophets too. He said, we learned about him as children from the Quran, right? Yeah, Jesus, we've got Jesus, check. We got him too. But you want to know what they've got about Jesus? I'll tell you what they don't have. They don't have the vision of a savior that came to bear your sins and mine and die on a cross for us. They don't have that Jesus. That's not the Jesus they learned about as kids. You know how I know? It's, that's what it says in the Quran. I mean, I don't normally, I don't normally bring the Quran to church uh, and quote to you from it. But can I do that just for a minute? Uh, I have a copy here of the Quran in English, and, and this, is, this is what it says. Speaking of Jesus, it says there was a, a monstrous falsehood that was uttered. It says, they declared, we have put to death the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. They did not kill him, 
nor did they crucify him, but they thought they did. It goes on to say, they did not slay him for certain. God lifted himself, lifted him up to himself. God is mighty and wise. So, so yeah, they got Jesus, but they just don't have the crucified Jesus. And the only Jesus that saved, saves is the Jesus that went to the cross for your sins and mine and that defeated the death, defeated the cross by rising to new life on the third day. That's the Jesus they don't have. You want to know what's interesting? Is people who don't have that Jesus don't just live far away across the sea. They live right around us, in our community, right here in Ottertail County. That's where they are. I was thinking about this guy's story. And I was thinking about how he, he talked about how, you know, um, yeah, we've got Jesus. We heard stories about him growing up in the Quran. And I thought, you know what? His testimony is a lot like this, the testimony of people in our community. This guy could maybe not be any, uh, any more different than so many in our community, right? But this guy from another country on the other side of the world, he, uh, his story is a lot like people around here. How so? Because we have a lot of people who, if they're honest, would say, yeah, I, I remember some things about Jesus, too, from when I was a kid. Yeah, I think my parents, they brought me to Sunday school for a while, and I remember, I remember learning a few things. But is that enough? That is not enough. They need more than faded memories of a Sunday school Jesus that they heard about long ago. They need to hear and receive the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do not have to go far again to find people who don't know the good news that Jesus loves them, that Jesus gave his life for them at the cross, and that Jesus, Jesus made room for them in his heart and in his heaven. People need to hear that God has made room for them. Jesus said to his disciples, not, not long before he left this earth, he said, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, when I go and make room for you, right, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. I think the people of, ba of, of Battle Lake and Fergus Falls, of the surrounding communities of Ottertail County need to hear that message. How about you? Don't you think so? That God has made room for them? So Bethel Church, here's the question. Who's going to engage in and invest in that message being told in our generation? Answer, we are. Church, we are. This is on us. We get to, by his grace, make room and watch God use us to make a difference in the lives of others. So thank you. I want to close by saying thank you, church, for the ways that you've done that. As you give, you're making room. As you serve, you're helping us make room. As you meet the needs of others in the name of Jesus, you're making room. And like I said, by God's grace, he will use these gifts of time and talent and treasure for his glory to make a difference in the lives of others. So let me close with this. As Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, thank you for uh, this year word the gospel, the message of a crucified and risen Savior. Um, thank you that this Savior has made room for us in his heart and in his heaven and now calls us to make room in our lives and in our facilities so that we can tell the good news of Jesus to the people of our community and around the world who need to hear that news. God, help us to be faithful. Uh, spur us from lethargy and, and being lazy, perhaps, or disinterested or otherwise preoccupied and engaged. Help us to be focused on this mission that you've given to us. Help us to stretch, to reach, and to do together what none of us can do by ourselves. Help us together to make room and to make a difference. So we need you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the good news of the gospel for us. Inspire in us 
um, a zeal to go and tell the world this, this message is also for them. It's not enough for us to know that we can be found in Christ. We know that you want that same message for others to be included in what you've done. Thank you, Lord. Use us, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. So now may, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God's peace be with you.